Sure, my name is Curtis Oz, C-U-R-T-I-S. Last name is spelled H-A-A-S. And I'm the Chief Pharmacy Officer here at the University of Rochester Medical Center. This is what's referred to as an ultra-cold freezer uh, or a minus 80 freezer. It's one of the freezers that we've acquired for storage of the Pfizer-BioNTech uh, vaccine. This freezer is estimated based upon the packaging that the vaccine will be in to be able to hold upwards of about 170 to 180,000 doses. Sure. As you can see, these freezers have inner doors to help the loss of cold air when you open it up, so you only open a portion of it at a time. As you can see, it's a very cold inside. Uh, normally, you would wear insulated gloves if you're handling any of the frozen contents inside the freezer uh, to prevent any type of skin damage. And what? Um... But the individual trays, if you will, look like a small pizza box. They're about nine inches by nine inches and about one inch tall. And each one of those trays will hold enough vials for 975 doses. So depending upon the number of boxes we receive, we have plenty of room for storage here between this and a second freezer. The shipping container is a, is a cold chain uh, shipment device that is packed with dry ice. And it's basically a container that contains the individual boxes inside a sleeve that has dry ice packed around it and also on top of it to maintain the, the, the ultra-cold storage during shipping. We have to keep it at the minus 80 degree temperature for any type of long-term storage. So the recommendation is that when we receive it, we get it into the freezer right away, or we have to recharge the dry ice in the box within 24 hours. They ask us to transfer it between the shipping carton in our freezer in less than two minutes. So they don't want it exposed to any ambient temperature for any length of time. Once we remove the vials from this freezer, they're good for five days at refrigeration temperature. Um, so we can remove, say, a day's worth of supply, place it, let it defrost, and place it at refrigerated temperatures, and we have up to five days to use that. Well, as you can see, it, it, we monitor the temperature continuously with an internal uh, monitor and alarm. And on this side of the freezer, you can see a wireless transmitter. It's also tied into a wireless monitoring system that continuously monitors the temperature. And if it goes out of range, it will not only alarm locally, but we'll also send a notification to people who are identified as being needing to be alerted that our temperatures are out of range. So we continuously monitor the temperature of this freezer. It would be leadership people within our department, managers and supervisors who have responsibility for uh, maintaining our supply. So they will get a, a, a page, basically, or a text message. If they don't respond within a relatively short period of time, it goes out to another person and then another person after that. So there's always uh, somebody who can respond to an out-of-range temperature. Well, this freezer and all of our freezers uh, are on emergency power. So they almost immediately transfer over to emergency power, and the freezers will be, uh, will be maintained. Well, given that the freezer is mostly empty and we don't anticipate filling it with vaccine initially, the manufacturer recommends that the freezer will maintain its temperature better and maintain better airflow if we take up some of the space uh, with something like styrofoam containers with or without ice packs in those. That'll help the freezer maintain its temperature more consistently if we have to go in and out of the freezer. So we're going to go ahead and place some of these into the, into the freezer to take up some of the space. And we'll go ahead and put in additional boxes um, Yeah, when, when will we get the...